The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. Martin. All right. Welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And I am your host, Daryl Martin. Welcome on back here. I've been uh, out in Sitka, Alaska for the last week. And i got to tell you, one of the most beautiful places, I think, on uh, this planet. And I uh, just learned a lot about the history. Sitka used to be um, the capital of Alaska when it was owned by Russia before it was signed over. And I uh, learned all about the uh, Tingle people and just did a lot of different things out there. Uh, big thing is I went fishing. And, I mean, I went fishing day after day after day. And uh, I got some pictures. I'm going to get those up and on my computer here, maybe show some of those this week. But I just got some massive, massive ling cod. Got a whole bunch of halibut, king salmon, um, you know, coho silver fish, uh, black bass, uh, rockfish. And literally just loaded up. And these things out there are absolutely huge. It was 65 degrees. I was wearing my shorts the entire time. And um, everybody was telling me about it, getting ready for the cold. And I was, <laughs> I was loving life. And, I mean, just to show you some, you know, examples of pictures of these things. I mean, they are just huge. And uh, you go out there, and, I mean, I, I, got, I got fish bigger than my daughter. And uh, she was a trooper. She went out there with me every day. And I kept telling her, I was like, do you want to go with me? Or do you want to stay, you know, on shore with Grandma and go to town? Or what do you want to do? And uh, no, she was she was all about the fishing, and uh, so I went out there with uh, Mikey uh, owns Sitka Point Lodge out there. He's a trader as well, and uh, has a place in Anchorage and out there in Sitka, and they're just right on the ocean there. And I mean, we just go out, and I mean, there's like, you know, I'm seeing whales coming up and breaching. There's orca whales. There's sea lions. There's sea otters. Uh, I mean, so not only you have the scenery, but of course you have the mountains everywhere. You got the the big volcano right there, you know, it's inactive for, you know, basically like 10,000 years, but huge volcano out there, and uh, just all the islands, the bird islands, and uh, I, I just, I was amazed. My wife, you know, she's been out to the Lake District over in London, and she's always talking about how beautiful it is, and, you know, she lived in Colorado for a while, and uh, she was like, wow, this beats Colorado and the Lake District combined. Uh, I mean, just, the, everything's just pristine, the air's clean, and uh, just a beautiful, beautiful place out there. And um, let's go ahead and check out where the market's at. Coming on in, first day back here, we got the S&P is up 18.5 points, up over 1% on the day. The Russell's up 9.3 right now. NASDAQ is up 44 points on the day right now, 1.5% being the leader in the indices. We got the Dow currently up 179 points. The, let's see, got oil right now. The CO contract up about 32 cents uh, from yes, the previous day's settlement. We got natural gas up 3.6%. Natural gas is flying. Corn right now is up 12 and a quarter, almost 2% on the day. Nice big move in corn. I'm looking forward to hearing uh, Larry's show on Thursday. He's going to talk about the ags. And I'm going to be tuning in myself, make sure to listen to that and uh, see what, uh, you know, pieces of wisdom I can get from that for trading corn. You can trade corn, of course, on Nadex. We'll talk about that a little bit later here in just a moment. And uh, we'll go on down. Let's check out soybeans up. Uh, it's pretty flat on the day right now. It's up a point. We got Euro dollar is down 10 pips. Aussie dollar is down 38. Pound dollar is down 10. U.S. CAD up 11. U.S. Frank up 49. So uh, it's it's been nice. Nice solid move right there. Weak, uh, weak Frank, solid uh, dollar. Euro yen is currently up a buck five pound, yen up a buck twenty four, and US yen up eighty two cents. And then looking on over, we got uh, gold is down a mere four points on the day, four point five right now. We got silver down a point eight eight percent, almost down one percent on the day, and we got copper is flat on the day. But uh, some decent movements in the indices going on based on some of the news that came out this morning, and uh, a lot of rumor trading going on. Um, everybody's expecting. After that little release from the you know Fed minutes and from Bernanke talking about, I mean one he talked about him not coming back. He, actually, he wouldn't talk about whether or not he was coming back. Uh, so that'll continue to be a you know is he coming back? Is he not coming back um, at the early part of next year? And then of course the other thing, the big thing was they're going to ease off on this quantitative easing. And uh, when it they said hey they may start as early as June, that freaked out the market, spooked it a little bit. Now. The rumor is that they're expecting them to sort of back off from that being a possibility anytime in the next minute or two, you know, right? 
So uh, may, maybe a little bit longer, but uh, of course everybody's nervous. What does that mean? Interest rates are rising. Uh, I'm looking at you know trying to push on those four percent rates on the mortgage rates and stuff like that. So uh, everybody can be watching very closely to see what's said. Is there any clue as to how soon? Now it's not a uh, if but a when. Of course, it always has been that way, but it feels much more like that to traders now that they're actually hearing it come out of the Fed's mouth. Of course, we also have the G8 meetings coming up, and uh, that has started, of course, today. That should be the big topic, um, but you know, the, just the way the world of economics works now, the, the U.S. Fed seems to you know, dominate the show. Um, they'll be looking at a few different things in economic policies. One of the big topics of discussion that should be on the top of their radar course should be Syria and all the stuff going on with that. And uh, there's even a big divide in how to intervene in that situation. But uh, just the whole, you know, the whole thing is uh, really interesting. But the big thing, of course, is going to be the Fed funds this week. Tonight, we do have the monetary policy meeting minutes coming out of Australia at 930. Would not expect that to be a major market mover all in and of itself simply because they didn't change their interest rate. So now... They'll be looking to see why didn't they change their interest rate? What will you know? What's the statement? All that stuff. So you could have a little bit of Aussie action right there, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't look for you know like a fifty or sixty pip just like out of you know, in five seconds move, uh, coming out of the monetary policy meeting minutes. But it could at least give it a little bit of umph to be a tradable instrument um, directionally versus non-directionally. Um, you know, looking for like a string or a straddle. I wouldn't necessarily go in looking for that. If anything, I might be looking for a binary uh, butterfly. So over on Nadex now. If you're uh, just now tuning into the show and you're like, what is this Nadex thing? You've mentioned it a couple times already. What you want to do is you want to hop on over to the homepage, okay? Hop on over to tfnn.com. And as soon as you do that, click on Nadex. Once you click on Nadex right there, then you can click on our products and demo account. Get yourself a demo account. It takes about 15 seconds to set it up. There's no cost or anything. Fill in your username, first name, last name, phone number, and email address. Click apply for demo. And they'll get you up and activated right away. Again, just fill in that basic information right there. Now, to get a live account, you can day trade this. Have you ever wanted to day trade? Have you ever thought about day trading? Or maybe you are a day trader. Uh, but maybe you want more leverage. But you are afraid of the risk. Okay? And uh, that's a healthy fear, you know? And, um, you know, being afraid of heights at a certain point is a healthy fear. Okay? So, um, you know, what can you do to make it safer? Well, Nadex does make it safer. It defines your risk. It's always capped. You can't get margin called. Um, you can choose to not get stopped out. You can be like, you know, there's $100 risk in this trade or there's $30 risk in this trade. And if it goes against me, I can't lose more than, you know, the $100 or the $30 or whatever. So that's something you could definitely consider looking over at Nadex. And you can start trading with only $100 in your account. Of course, most people are going to put 500 or 1000 or whatever in there at least. But, I mean, you could actually start one with $100. There's not a $25,000 requirement like there is in stocks. And you don't have to worry about the, all the weird margin rules like you do in futures. It's Your risk is your margin. Okay? So if your risk is 50 bucks, that's your margin. 50 bucks. And, you know, sometimes people hear that and they're like, wait a minute, 50 bucks? I mean, how can I actually place a trade for 50 bucks? Now, you can do one, you can do 50, you can do 100. Okay? So you can do as big or as little as you want to right there. But we can go over here and look at this. And, um, you know, looking at trades... Right here, we'll just look at something. You know, if I want to go in and tra let's just say uh, the spreads, okay? And they have a couple different contracts, a couple different types of contracts, and they are totally different kinds of contracts. But um, looking at them right now, and we got the S&P like at 1637. So you could go in if you wanted to. You could place this trade. You could put a buy order in right here. You'd be risking 33 bucks. You could make up to 67. Um, and at the S&P, you know, let's say it expires at 1638, then you'd get your 33 bucks back. Okay, if it went down to 1620, you'd lose your 30 bucks. If it went down to 1635, you'd lose your 30 bucks. If it was at you know in between, if it was at 16 say 37, you get like you know 15 of that 30 back. So it's really simple. Your risk is completely defined, and I call them box spreads uh, when I'm talking about trading them a lot of times because they look like boxes when you put them on charts. And uh, so the spreads and the binaries are two uh, like I said completely unique instruments, but you can trade them. And you can trade them with, um, out having to f the fear that you have in futures of going in and just getting wiped out in five seconds. And um, so if we go over here and look at this spread, it's 1635 to 1645. What does that mean to you as a trader? Well, if I go in, I can literally just draw a box on the screen. And uh, let's see here. Let me drag this down a little bit. So 1635 to 16, you know, 45, right up here. What this means is no matter what happens, okay, if this goes down, I'm still in the trade. If it goes up, I can make money. 
Okay, it can go above the box, and I can still get maximum profit. All right, so I can still make money above it. I just can't lose. I can't make any more above it. So once I've hit the ceiling, I you know I've made say sixty-seven dollars. Now, by the way, they have ones where you can make thousands too. So it depends upon which trade you're doing, how many contracts you're doing, for how much you're going to make going up. But on this particular spread that expires here pretty soon, the most I could make on it would be sixty-seven bucks. The most I could lose would be thirty-three. But the beautiful thing is one, not only having the capped risk and the you know high level of margin, but if the S&P goes down and then goes up and then let's say goes way down okay, and then comes way back up before expiration I never had more than 30 bucks at risk and I could still be profitable so I'm not as worried about that so that's one of the cool things about the way the spreads work now I trade them that way for certain events I also will just trade them like they're an underlying market depending upon what my risk is and how the trade sets up so I may go ahead and take a stop loss if I need to on the trade. So it all depends on the trade right there. So um, just depending upon you know what I'm looking at and how I'm looking at doing it. But the, the biggest thing I like is the low amount of um, dollars I have to put up to be able to place that trade. I don't have to put up near as much money as I would in a lot of other trades that are out there. And even if you're doing, let's say, five of these, okay? Well, five of them would be 150 bucks. Well, if you're trading S&P 500 futures, the, probably the minimum you're putting up is four hundred dollars, okay? Maybe five hundred dollars. With some brokers, you're going to be putting up like twelve or fifteen hundred dollars. If you're trading overnight, you're putting up you know four or five thousand dollars. So I'm only putting up one hundred fifty bucks to place the trade. Now I could do one of them at thirty three, but I also also could do five of them. And when I say five, people get sort of confused. Like why? Where does the number five randomly come from? Okay. Well, the number is not random. Uh, let me show you how this works over on the S and P five hundred futures. So if I hop over here, let's go in and let's look at uh, the spread scanner. By the way, if you want to know where to get access to this spread scanner, just hop on over to TFNN. And over here, you'll see the diagnostic box spread analyzer. Now we also have the binary analyzer. And you can uh, sign up and get a free trial of that right away. But it makes it very easy to understand how to trade these spreads. And so let's look at it. And what we'll see right here, if we go to the S&P 500, is we can go down. And it has a little information box for you right here. And it tells you that the S&P 500 is currently following the September 2013 future contract. And the symbol is ES09-13, like on NinjaTrader, or maybe you're using Thinkorswim. It's going to be like forward slash ESU3. And um, the, the tick size on Nadex is 0.1. The tick size on the futures is 0.25. Well, the value of a tick on Nadex is $1. Every tick, which is always the last increment it quotes in. So if it quotes in whole numbers like the Dow, then that last digit is going to be worth a dollar. If it quotes, in this case, you know, dimes like gold, okay, then that last digit is going to be a dollar. If it quotes in pennies like oil, that last digit is going to be a dollar. So every tick, every minimum move, if you're used to stocks, every penny is going to be worth a dollar. Well, in the S&P, every tick is a quarter, and it's worth 12 bucks and 50 cents. So I'll come back to why it takes five Nadex spreads to equal one S&P future contract when we get back from this break. says you can't take it with you. TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians. Host
Watching their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl takes your phone calls <laughs> now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. All right, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. Just going into a quick understanding of the spreads. And we're talking about, you know, why uh, does it take five U.S. 500 spreads to take a one Nadex contract? Or uh, sorry, one a uh, five US five hundred index spreads to one future S and P five hundred contract. So on the S and P five hundred futures, every tick is a quarter, every tick value is twelve fifty. There's four quarters in a dollar. Okay, twelve fifty times two is twenty five bucks. Twelve fifty times four, so twelve fifty times four quarters. Okay, is fifty dollars. So every one point move, one dollar move in the S and P five hundred is worth fifty bucks on the S and P five hundred futures okay fifty dollars because there's four quarters in a dollar it takes in quarters every quarter is worth 1250 so you can go back and review that one if that's new to you but we have it right there on the scanner for you in front of you nadex ticks in point one every tick is a dollar so if it moves 10 dimes all right 10.1 point one point two point three you know for a dollar if it moves 10 dimes and every dime is worth a dollar then you get a ten dollar move when the spread's value moves by one point. All right, so we put those two together. All right, then what do we get? Well, 10 bucks versus 50 bucks. So how many spreads, if one spread, one point move, is equal to 10 bucks, how many spreads do you need to equal $50 in a one point move? If every spread's one point move equals 10 bucks, five. So if you have five of them, then one point move will be 10 bucks, but you have five, so a one point move will be 50 bucks. That makes it the same as trading a S&P 500 future in a one point move on the spread versus a one point move on the underlying, okay? So the big thing is if you just understand that simple concept, if you want to trade spreads to replace, okay, to replace futures, 
then simply use five of them. And we put that right on the scanner. We actually say the equivalent instrument use one ES contract for five Nadex use US 500 spread contracts. Now, maybe you're trading the US 500 spreads. Maybe you want to use them outright directionally. Okay, so you want to buy the S&P 500. You want to sell the S&P 500. You know, this morning, obviously buying it would have been a good idea. And uh, maybe you want to straddle it. You could buy and sell, like before a news report or something like that. And that's something you can take advantage of. Maybe you want to do premium collection. So you could actually collect premium using the spreads. I'm going to be teaching that pretty soon, um, how to do premium collection on the spreads. So that's one uh, thing that you could look at potentially doing. And what else could you do? Well, you could also hedge. Maybe you're an S&P 500 future trader or a gold trader or oil trader, Russell trader. Maybe you're a Euro dollar trader. You can use these spreads to hedge. So, because remember, here's the beautiful thing about the spreads. They cap on risk. They stop losing and they stay on. Think of them like, you know, if you were selling a spread, think of that like buying a put. Okay, so I could go down here and I could sell, the, say, the 16, you know, 37 to 16, 27 spread over here. And if the market goes up, great. But if it goes down, I'm hedged because it's making 50 bucks for every 50 bucks that the future's losing. And so now, how would that work? What, what would I do to make that happen? You know, because I have to find the right spread on here. So there's a lot of spreads available. Look at all these. These are all ones that are available right now. So I'm probably going to go, you know what? I don't want to risk more than 100 bucks. And I want a risk reward ratio of, we'll just say, one to one, okay? And let's say if we want to sell the spreads because we want to buy the S&P, okay? Now we can go down here and go, you know what? Um, I want to be able to get something that's really close to ideally where the market's at. Let's say I got a 1640, and I got a 1630, and I got a, oh, there's a 1635. So I could look at the 1635 if I wanted to. And I can put that trade on for relatively, you know, nothing. The risk on the trade, uh, the spread itself is 30 bucks. So just buying like, or buying um, five of those, okay? So if I did that, and let's see here. So $30 right here, and that'll kick in for me. Let's look at it, okay? This will kick in for me at 16.35. And so if we zoom in a little bit, yeah, let me get rid of some of these uh, little green arrows I got going on. Then what's going to happen is, well, I have $30 of risk on this spread, which means I basically have to get a couple ticks on the S&P to pay for my protection. Okay? And then I do have a risk. My risk is going to be from where I buy the S&P to where the spread is sold. So if I'm selling the spread, let's say at 1634.5, and I buy the S&P at 1638.5, the difference is my risk. So I have two points of risk in the, actually, sorry, four points of risk in the trade. So I have a $200 risk on the trade, but I have a hedge all the way down to 1625 with no cap on my profit. So now I've opened the box, uncapped box. Uh, stay right there. We'll be right back after this break. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives you Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. With Market Insights, nothing is left to guessing. With the market at record levels, volatility is here, and now is a perfect time to take advantage of a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights. As recently as March 26th, Tom advised his subscribers to liquidate their four short-term equity holdings, closing out all four positions for a combined 15.9% profit. And on April 1st, Tom advised his clients to sell their longer-term position in AIG warrants, locking in more than a 40% profit in just that one trade. If you'd like to see the kind of newsletter Tom O'Brien sends out to his subscribers each morning, then sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts has officially launched at TFNN. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind software, the art of timing the trade charts allows you to scan for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, Butterflies, ABCs, and much more. The art of timing the trade charts is designed to help you when scouring the market for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, and even months searching to find. As part of our introductory pricing, we're offering licenses available at only $59 per month. We're so confident that you'll love this new outstanding piece of charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Lock in your low price today by ordering your copy at TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading, and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, we'll come on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And right now, uh, just sort of going through the spreads and talking about how they work, putting them together, and how you get your hedge on here. So if you would have went in and bought this, you would have had about four points of risk. If you would have bought the S&P 500 futures, sold the spreads. And, you know, this is a good trade to do if you think, hey, you know, there's a solid support line right here, which, by the way, happens to be right at the one deviation line, and which is at 1635.75. And uh, let me uh, zoom in on this for you, let you see it a little bit uh, clearer. But um, you can see right there, we got that deviation line. And um, yeah, we'll get rid of that. Zoom this out and pull it on down there. There you go, 1635.75. So we post these each evening around 8.15 and at night. You're able to get access to them. And that's basically a 70, 68 to 70% of expected movement on any given day. It's about as far as we expect it to move from low to high. And uh, they're incredibly accurate. And it's at that point where, you know, you definitely want to be starting to tighten your stops. So I would tighten my stop. Like once it passes this one deviation line, I'm definitely going to be looking to tighten my stop right here, right below the bar that closed above it. It's like right there. And so that's tightening that stop. And now where's it going to go next? Well, uh, the next level uh, based on the statistical movement. Okay. the And this is statistics but not statistics of historical volatility. That's what, you know, you would see in, like, say, standard deviation. That's historical volatility, which doesn't mean anything about today. It's what happened yesterday and previous days. 
or you know you see uh, trader pivots, pivot points, Pearson pivots, things like that. Well, those are great, but they're all historical numbers. They're all based on historical numbers and uh, not based on historical volatility, things like that. They're not based on future expectations. Um, you got Fibonacci's, which are awesome, and when combined and used correctly with things like Gartley patterns are are sweet. And one thing I've noticed over and over again um, with Steve, with Tommy, with Larry putting all these together is very often the pivots will line up, uh, the, the, the diagnostic deviation pivots will line up directly with the you know Fibonacci levels, the, the key levels that uh, Tommy teaches and that Steve teaches, Larry teaches, and put them all together. And so we put all this together, and what we're doing is we're using implied volatility, which is expected movement, okay? So that's the movement expected by the market. And um, where do, what do you mean the movement expected by the market? Who is the market? The market is everybody, okay? And uh, this is a survey of all trading market participants that are buying or selling calls or puts on underlying markets. And they place their vote by buying or selling calls or puts. That's it, okay? And the more demand that they place, the more votes they place, the more money they put in, the more it pumps up the premium because there's more expected move. And that's called implied expected volatility, movement. So the more expected movement there is, the more individuals will be taking on positions directionally or be taking on to hedge their positions. And it, it doesn't tell you what direction. It just tells you how much movement in direction is expected by everyone involved. Okay. And so you can actually pull that number out of the options price. Now, we look at 16 options, and we pull implied volatility out of them. We make our own volatility index. We weight them over four months' volatilities, and then we apply it to a basically a bell curve deviation um, formula for one day of movement. And that's where these levels come from every day, and that's why they're so incredibly accurate. And uh, so, you know, one deviation, we're looking at about 68%. Two deviations, we're looking at around 97%, you know. Three deviations, we're at like 99.4% of maximum expected move. Now, does it occasionally break through? Yes, rarely. And so I like to focus on the consistent things I can count on. This is how far I should be looking for the market to move. And when it does hit these levels, if it, I want to tighten my stops, okay? I want to be looking to tighten my stop as soon as I can. I may even tighten it when it hits the level. Um, like at a one or two or three, because those are so those are just major levels. And when I say one, and I taught this a lot, like two weeks ago, you want to go back and look at some of those archives. I went in and actually taught how you'd measure from the close of the day to the high of the day to actually figure out what one deviation was. Don't just look at one level one. Look at low to high, okay? Cause, because sometimes it may go down 0.3 and then up 0.7. Well, that's a one deviation move. But specifically, my favorite method is when it closes above a deviation, I tighten my stop. If it closes below it and then above it again, I'll tighten it again. And I'll keep tightening it in that method. And it gives me a great way to trail my stops objectively and to have correct market expectation of movement versus me wanting it to go to the moon or me just getting overly nervous. And also me knowing, hey, this is where the market should probably oscillate for a while. Okay? And um, I should expect oscillation when it busts one deviation. And look what it did. It oscillated. And I expect it to oscillate. Okay? And now it may keep going. If it does, great. But it's either going to oscillate, fly, move back. That's, of course, always the case. But especially at these levels. And if it's going to oscillate, hey, let's tighten it. Let's just grab our profit if it comes back. Okay? It may reverse. Well, I'm glad I took my profit. And if it takes off in my favor, Awesome. So the thing is, I need an objective method on a way, not just to go, yeah, I know the market will go up, down, or stay flat, but I need a place to go, when and where do I tighten my stops? And here, hopefully in the next 30 days, we're going to have these deviations up for 40 futures, um, probably about a dozen currency pairs, and over 3,000 stocks, ETFs, and indices. So I'm um, here in the U.S., so I'm really excited about having that up and running in live. Traders will be able to use them and pull them up. And uh, so just make sure that uh, you, you check it out. But uh, the, the deviations are very helpful for helping you and know where to, you know, lock in your profits along the way. But right here we got the S&P 500. That's one example. Okay, well, we could go over and, I mean, you know, let's see what do we have, some things that are moving today. We have the dollar franc moving like crazy today. Let's check it out. All right, so we got these big moves going. Right over here, let's go ahead and pull up the dollar frank. Let's see how it's doing on this. Right. There we go. All right, dollar frank. So it's up 0.7 right now. So you're thinking, okay, that wasn't one deviation. 
let's measure it. And I haven't even um, measured this this one this morning yet. So right here, at a close, and then right up to the high, and that's barely visible at all for some odd reason. Let me see if I can change that up. There we go. So we got 68 pips. So how big is that? All right, is that a deviation? From high to low. Well, let's check it out. Up here, we actually have the deviations feeding right into, you see this, right into the uh, members area. If you sign up for that over at TFNN for the diagnostic spread scanner, you'll get access to this. And we go down here, and we can check out the dollar franc, and we'll see that one deviation is 70 pips. All right, so we basically got a full deviation move. I mean, plus or minus a couple ticks. And I guess we could get real specific if we wanted to. And, um, you know, line up to the exact tick. I'm just sort of quick drawing it. We might even have 70 if I got it right down to it. Let's see. We'll just uh, we'll drill down on it right there and see what happens. All right. So it may be plus or minus a little bit from that. Put it right there. Put it right up here. Got about 67. So plus or minus a few ticks, not bad. One deviation move. And notice how it's went into oscillation mode. Now, all along the way, you can also be tightening it every time it closes above a deviation level. And that's one of the things I'm constantly teaching. So when it closes above, say, the 0.5 level right here, notice this went above it but did not close above it. This one closed above it. So that's like, hey, you know what? Tighten your stop. And then it does it again. It closes above the 0.7. So we tighten our stop again. Closes below it, not back above it, knocks us out. We're out of the trade. Not a bad trade right there. Okay. And if you know how I trade, if you've watched me trade, um, then you know that you know I trade basically you get a pullback. When you get a bar that breaks above the previous bar's high, you buy. You set a stop loss right below the lowest point since that pullback. It takes off when it's going up. Every time it breaks a high, you have another trade. So I could go in again, and I could buy right here, and I could move a stop right here. And then I could buy again right here because see it went down, broke it right there again and so I got basically three entries along the way stop tighten my stop tighten my stop again tighten my stop again so far all entries profitable all entries now out and exited and that's that's how I trade now the other thing you can do is you can go in and do a RSI divergence notice how this line is pointing higher okay if we go in here from the same point over here and notice right there it'll be pointing lower so that at the same time would have given you that RSI divergence that you could have been looking to tighten your trailing stop on. I don't look to enter on ISR divergences because they can diverge for a long time. That one didn't give me one. That one didn't give me one. Okay. So that was the one RSI divergence we got this morning that also coincided with the breakout of the previous bars high right there. And putting all those pieces together, so one, two, three entries, and uh, tighten the stops. And uh, the biggest move right there, captured... Nothing massive to write home about, but about 30 ticks or so. So not too bad. You know, it'd be 30 bucks on one spread or 300 bucks on 10. And um, you know, if we would have got in this morning, you would have captured a small profit on the trade. Nothing that spectacular, but uh, you know, 10, 15 ticks on the trade right there. And you could use these deviations all the way up. It makes it super, super simple to trade. Um, looking on over here, checking out the uh, Nasdaq. We'll see where that's at right now. It's uh, busted the one, went on up to one and a half. Notice how it paused right at the one and a half deviation level as well. And, but check it out, one deviation. Look at this. It just oscillated right here the entire time. Came back down to 0.7 then finally busted, busted up, and moved on through. Now I can also see right here, check, this is important. This is really vital. I mean, obviously, this is overnight volume. But if we back out a little bit, you can see this is a just a massive volume. It's a breakout. It shows a lot of strength to the upside. Of course, that coincided with some news that we got this morning as well. Uh, you know, just nothing major, but I mean, we did have the Empire State Manufacturing Index. It came in uh, way better than expected, and it came in right there at 8:30, and that was before the news came out. I mean, the new, I mean, the news came out, and so the market was sort of calm. And I've seen this pattern happening a lot lately. I'd say in the last month or two, where you'll have news come out, and you'll actually see the reaction to the news after. Okay, after the market opens. So it gives you like a lot of time to hop in and uh, trade it. We can hop on over here to the Russell. And on the Russell right here, we can see it move on up with that one deviation. Boom. Perfect. And where did you tighten that stop? The close above. So if you're in up here, right there, 
and it goes in and does that, and then it just goes into chop pretty much all morning long over on the Russell. I mean, all the move happened overnight, and it was already sitting up at one deviation. So always use a little, you know, lighten your risk when you get above those one deviation levels because uh, you just don't know the prob. I mean, the probability is 30% that it's going to go much higher than that. And it uh, doesn't mean that it's, you know, a horrible trade. It just means, I mean, be aware that that's where the steam is up to that point. And after that, it's usually going to taper off unless there's something to keep carrying it. So um, we go in and we can also check out. We got the Dow. We got the Russell. Uh, let's look at the Dow. We got that's the last one we got to check out right here. It moved up, hit one deviation, bounced off of that from the overnight, and then moved on back up and almost up at one and a half deviations. We go over here. Let's check out now. Let's look at a few of our currencies. We'll go and look at Aussie dollar. And Aussie dollar this morning moved up to 0.5, hesitated to 0.7, back to 0.5, and on back down to negative 0.5. Aussie showing uh, quite a bit of weakness in comparison to the dollar. Dollar showing a lot of strength across the board, uh, except for the euro has been sort of choppy along with it. But uh, that Aussie dollar moving on down along with a strength meter right there. And going in, let's look at euro dollar. So euro dollar, both uh, showing a lot of strength. This is a pair to do a binary butterfly on right now, okay? Both currencies, the euro and the dollar, are showing a lot of strength. So this would be one you might choose to do a binary butterfly on. What is a binary butterfly? Well, I talked about these uh, a couple weeks ago in the shows. Let's go look and see. You can easily do this over here on the binary scanner. And we'll go in, and I'll just throw this on just as an example so you can see how it works. Okay. And I'm going to set my uh, Rista 70 to 90. And I'm going to choose Euro Dollar. And I'm going to bring it down to, say, 30 minutes. Let's see if we can catch anything. So anything up right now. There might not be anything up. Let's see what we got. Ah, nothing is showing up that I want right now. Let me reset all my filters. See if, hey, there we go. Okay, now let's tighten that back up. 70. All right. Wow. They are just right on the line. It, it, the market is saying, hey, this thing's flat. It's not moving. <clears throat> Look at that. Um, so I'm just trying to see if there's anything we can take advantage of right here. We got 46, we got 26, 36 is right in between, so that means it's like right at that price. Yeah, there's just no butterfly going on at all. So I wouldn't even attempt it, but that's what I'd be looking for. When you see a currency not moving, that's uh, when you're going to look for it. Right now, they're both showing a lot of strength. So what could you do? What would be an example of a binary butterfly? Well, Right now we got the euro dollar sitting at 1.3335, so 3.335, which means we're right in the middle of these two, okay? So you could look at doing them right now for about a $40 profit and a $60 risk on the trade for a 3 o'clock expiration. That's a little probably further out than I usually like uh, when I'm doing these, but it is a possibility. My favorite time to do butterflies is actually before news. Because I have stats on the ranges. But uh, you could go in here and you could buy this for 88, sell this for 27. And so let's just say we did that real quick. Go on, put it in, put that one in. Okay, so what does this mean? Um, well, we'll talk about that when we get back from this break. We'll give you a quick summary of it. Play right there. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus
prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, so let's get on back here to this uh, quick uh, lesson on a butterfly. Basically, a butterfly is saying that it's going to be a range-bound, iron butterfly, range-bound strategy. So we're saying that the uh, euro dollar will stay between 33.23 and 33.43 uh, for the next hour. And by doing so on a range-bound butterfly, uh, by having extra time, you're going to have more width. You're also, of course, going to have more time to be wrong, so you got to be careful with that. But with this trade, we can make basically 40 bucks. Uh, you can make what? Uh, what is it? Twelve fifty plus twenty six fifty. That puts you at let's see, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty nine, thirty nine dollars. So you make thirty nine bucks on the trade. You're risking sixty one dollars on the trade. And understand, you're only risking that if you hold on to it until expiration. All right. You could choose if it goes up. Say, let's say if it goes up to let's, let's just say it goes down. Okay. If it goes down to, you know, 23, you could get out at about 50, you'd capture about $25 profit, and you lose 40, so you only lose $15 on a $40 profit. So if you'll babysit the binary butterfly a little bit, all right, you can reduce your risk to about 25% of your potential profit. 
And that's a very cool way to trade these butterflies. You see two strong pairs, like euro and dollar right now, are both showing strength. So if I butterfly them, and if they'll keep uh, both having that strength, means which means they'll, they won't move a whole lot. They'll stay pretty range-bound, because basically just all the forces are pushing both of them um, in opposing directions. So, I mean, if you want to trade euro, you want to trade like euro franc right now, or euro aussie. Okay, or euro pound. If you trade dollar, you want to trade pound dollar, dollar franc, dollar cad, you know, Aussie dollar. You don't want to be trading euro dollar right now because they're both strong. So take advantage of that neutrality, so that battle neutrality happening at the moment, and that's where doing something like a button binary butterfly comes in. At the same time, I mean, they're they're sort of close. I mean, you're talking a 10 pit move up or down in euro dollar. That's not a huge movement requirement, and. Um, so you can go in and put that trade on. And again, if it gets up to your strike, just get out of the trade and lose 15 bucks. Okay? When I say get out, I mean close both sides. All right? And you always know a binary is going to be worth 0 or 100 at expiration, or it's going to be worth 50 when in the underlying market is at the same strike as the binary. So if I know that and I sold it for 26.50, that means if I got it at 50 bucks, I'd lose like 23.50. Okay? And the other one, I'd make $10. So great, okay. So I lost thirteen fifty. Who cares? So, but I was going for forty. If I can do that, you know, one out of four times, I'm break even. Um, and I hope, ideally, hopefully, you can do that more than one out of four times. But it's a very cool way to trade them, and you can even do this on premium collection directionally. The cool thing about the butterflies is you get both sides, uh, so you double your profit when you are correct about the range. But it is range bound. So um, I only, uh, range bound is pre-news, or if I see two strong currencies at the same time, that's when I'll look at potentially doing a range bound strategy. And uh, that gives us our wrap up on how the binary butterflies work. And let's see here, let me look over at uh, one last thing. So just make sure to manage that. If it does uh, go against you, get out of it, okay? And right now, we got the S&P moving on up. We got it up right now, 20 points on that day. We have the Russell's currently up at 9.8. We have the NASDAQ up 45 with the Dow up 188. Oil's currently up uh, 14 ticks with natural gas up uh, 4%. Wow. We got corn up 1.5% uh, still. Soybeans now uh, still flat on the day. Euro dollar, Aussie dollar, pound dollar. Not a whole lot going on. Aussie dollar is the big mover, I guess, with 31 pips. We got US CAD up 17, US franc up 44, Euro yen up a buck 10, pound yen up a buck 24, and US yen up 80. And uh, we'll be talking about some news tomorrow, so make sure you're uh, on the show. And we'll talk about different ways to trade that on Nadex. Y'all have a great evening, hey, or a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today. Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away.